Kia ora, good evening, welcome to Chat Room. I'm Maria Williams. Got a couple of special guests tonight, but before we go to them, here's a question for you playing at home. Who is on our New Zealand $10 note? Now, if you answer that really quickly, you may already know what the organising organisation does that we're talking to tonight. We welcome Kay Whelan and Jennifer Harris from the National Council of Women, the Hawke's Bay branch. Good evening. Good evening. Now it's a big name, National Council of Women, and I know we're the Hawke's Bay branch and we've got the New Zealand branch, but where have we come from? What's the history of it? Well, um, as, you, as you said about Kate Shepherd, um, in 1896, which was three years after women got the vote, Kate Shepherd became the first president of the first National Council of Women. And that was actually, they had their first meeting, the first such meeting in the world, on the 13th of April, 120 years ago. Wow. So that's... Going um, a long time, a eh? A long time. And okay. they got together, what, she, what they did was they gathered organisations together to work for the betterment of women and for the good of humanity together so that each organisation had its own things they were doing but together they could do more. Okay and of course there was a big struggle back back in Kate Shepherd's mm -hmm. day and around yes. the vote and women's rights and equality mm -hmm. and all of those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. how, how have you managed to sustain it over the years because lots of organisations come up and they're, they're worthy but they don't last as long as your guys have. I think that's happened because there's always been improvements in, that can be made for women yeah. and there's always women who want to work together to do that and all that's right. how it's happened. Have we made positive changes? Have we done things over the last hundred and so years which, which has been achieved at a good level? Well, if you look at the things that were passed, I've got the resolutions passed at that very first meeting 120 years ago were about women in Parliament. Yeah. So things have improved. There were no women in Parliament then. Sure. Um, equal pay. Yeah. And of course we did get equal pay in the early 70s. Um, and working conditions for women, because women okay. often were in quite low paid labouring type jobs sure. and working conditions. So those were the, the resolutions they passed at that very first meeting and we have improved hugely. Yeah, sure. And I know that you had a forum in February just this year, didn't you, the mm, National Council did. of Women. So tell us a little bit about that. Well that was because we are still on um, local bodies, about a third of local bodies are women two-thirds are men, which sure. means in, in round figures there's twice as many men at meetings as there are women yeah. and that does need to improve and so we had a forum with um, Barbara Arnott was the chair and we had other councillors on a forum to talk about on the panel about what it was like being a woman combining often home things with being a councillor and boards of trustees is another area where women um, can begin doing that kind of thing and we had more than between 35 and 40 women were there and it was a great meeting. What a good turnout. Um, it was a great turnout yeah. and there was a real buzz afterwards of people having heard what these women had to say, able to answer questions yeah. and then people networking with each other. It's very enjoyable. What made you hold that sort of forum? I mean I think it's a fantastic forum and it's a, it's a great co-pup, it's a great subject but did that come from a demand? Were you getting people that were coming to you going, mm, no, <laughs> we'd heard about other branches doing it and every time we planned it, it seemed too close. Right. So we decided we needed to get busy before the summer yep. and worked over the Christmas break to have it all set up so sure. that it gave people time to think about it before yep. they had to get their nominations in. And also the other key thing was that women seemed to need encouragement to put themselves forward. Mm -hmm. Mm. And so if we got in early and women were surrounding women, yep. then that would probably help them make up their minds. We made it quite clear they didn't have to start this year in these coming local body elections, but sure. it was something putting the information out there yep. so that if they were thinking about any of that, they could mix and mingle with people who'd done it. Interesting. Interesting that's come up. So the mere fact that women need more encouragement to yeah. go into these sorts of areas. Why do you think that is? I think part of it is about, um, part of it's about personality. Um, women, I mean certainly women can be assertive, there's no doubting that and some men will, I'm sure would agree with that. <laughs> but um, women tend to be a little bit more retiring, don't tend to quite put themselves forward as much as they could. Sure. Um, and it seems like 
it's just that extra encouragement is more likely to help that to happen. And it's the same with women who, I mean, a man goes to a job interview. Now, if he's asked, can you do something, he'll think to himself, he could think to himself, I can't, but I, I'll, I will. I'll sure. say I can because I'll find out how to do it. Whereas a woman won't, will, will say, I'm not sure how to do it, but I will find out. She will say it. He sure. will just think it, and he yes. will say that he can do it. Yep. Where she's saying, I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Okay. And so just not quite as um, assertive, you could say. Sure. And what, were the, what was the feedback from the female counsellors who were part of that forum? Were they, were they quite excited that you were having it, and did they give good information out? They were fantastic in just jumping straight in and, yes, yes, we'll be there, we'll help. Mm. Um, and the points they made were very much needing the network of family support yep. to do so. Um, one thing we didn't expect, they actually had the role model of previous generations that had been in community service in some way or another. And so it never crossed their mind not to do something like that, which was interesting. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, and another thing they were saying was, while they needed the youth and the enthusiasm and the energy, they also had to remember the respect for the people. They might not have approved of their decisions at the time, but the knowledgeable people that were, had already served on the council sure. and what they'd done. Yeah. So, um, sure. And I that know, Kay, that you've brought in a couple of little things that have shown us how far we've come in, in yes. the time that you've been yes. going. Yes, well, um, there's a little story here. When Elizabeth Yates was elected to be Mayor of Onehunga in 1893, the first woman to achieve this in the British Empire, the world press acclaimed her success, but not so in Onehunga. However, four male councillors promptly resigned. Wow as well as the town clerk and the entire only hung a fire brigade. <laughs> and the fire brigade resigned. <laughs> they all resigned. Isn't that interesting? So that was the first female mayor in, yes. in the whole Br British Empire, Yes, did in you the say? British Empire. Wow. Mm. New Zealand's pretty cool, really, We're eh? pretty cool, all right. Yes, absolutely. Haven't we come a long way? We have come a long, long way. So the first female mayor in 1893. Well, that's because, interestingly, um, the Counties and Municipal Corporations Act, and I can read this, remember it all, of 1876 actually enfranchised ratepayers, including women. So in fact, women had, in 1876, had the vote in local body elections. So that was well ahead of its time. Well ahead of its time. And, um, and in 1898, the Act extended to include spouse of ratepayers. So if it was a female ratepayer, she could vote in 1876. And then in 1898, a spouse could also vote. Lots of really good things we've done in the past. I know we're doing lots of really exciting things currently as well. When we come back after the break, we'll find out what the National Council of Women are doing uh, currently and also a few really neat things that we've got coming up. This is Chat Room. Good evening, welcome back to Chat Room. I'm Maria Williams and enjoying talking to Kay Whelan and Jennifer Harris. They are the President and the Vice President of the National Council of Women in the Hawke's Bay branch. Now I know uh, that the national, at a national level you also do lots of really interesting things. What are some of the things that we're doing at the moment? Well right now um, the uh, National Council of Women nationally has produced a white paper or a discussion document on um, the future of gender equality in New Zealand. Sure. And it's brought out the current state where we are now yep. and what we would like to see in the future Perfect. to kind of focus on what needs doing. Because I think it's easy for people to think we've got there, we've got equal pay, what's your yep. problem? Sure. Um, and so it was, it was about highlighting how, where we need to move to. Sure. So, and I know that I've talked to a few people about the National Council of Women talking to you and things like that, and they go, oh, you know, what, what is it that, you, that they do? And mm. we talk about, you know, equality and pay and things like that. Mm. And quite a few people have said, well, we're there, aren't we? Yes, yes, exactly. So, so that yes. seems to be the mm. kind of general thought mm. that we are there. So you're mm. saying that we perhaps have a little bit to go? Oh, we've definitely got a little bit to go. Um, and particularly, well, the figures, for, for example, we were talking about the um, figures for local body, well, certainly. In, in Parliament too, we need more women because there's sure. only about a third. Again, I think we, I wrote this, I did write it down, but we have got 31% of the 121 seats are women. It puts us 29th in 138 countries. Okay. Sure. So that's still quite a way to go. We're nowhere yep. near the top like we are in a few things. Yeah. 
Okay, good stuff. So, and that's what the document is? Uh, it highlights other areas as well, things like um, tertiary qualifications. Now, 61% of women actually um, graduate, which is more than that's fantastic. men, that's but great. we just don't get higher up in, organi in, in the workforce. Yeah. Uh, okay. We tend to lag back and the men tend to be the leaders. Okay. So there are some women leaders but nowhere near as many as there could be. Okay. So that's an other area to work on. Unemployment is higher for women than for men. And w men earn more money overall as well. So, and again that's that pay parity. Sure. Um, which is another area where women get, tend to get less pay for a similar kind of job to, to men. Yeah. So those are some of the, some of the areas, and and of course domestic violence. Yes, a, a far more women have domestic violence issues than men do. Okay, so that's a huge area. So I'm really interested in the process because the white paper, the discussion paper that you're working on, mm -hmm. how is that put together? Who comes up with the thought that we need to have a white paper and these are the things that we need to do? How does that work? Do you do you know, Jennifer? Well, you've got a. a board, an elected board that operate in Wellington yeah. and the president and, and the um, staff there, they send out issues to the branches and because the branches are, are um, and National Council of Women in general is an umbrella organisation, its membership is representatives of other organisations. Sure. So, and they're not totally women's organisations, the NZEI and the Nurses Association and so on have membership and they're not exclusively women by any means. Sure. So National Council of Women being that umbrella organisation has the ability to tap into the background of whatever the issues are sure. because their members somewhere will be already clued up about it yeah. and when we get notification that something is coming up we, if we have time, can get a, a speaker who can educate us so that we make informed decisions yeah. and if they're ideally that's the way to go of course but because of the umbrella membership then someone that's involved will have the wider information uh, on which we can make informed decisions sure. and that's not only useful in one direction but it also means that our members are becoming more informed sure. so it's a two-way process yeah. so when we send our opinions back to Wellington and they're collated um, we're speaking for women over such a wide range um, and then those uh, collated um, opinions are put to government select committees okay. or whichever ministry is handling yeah. whatever topic it happens to be and there's been um, a review of the Education Act and there's been a review of breast and cervical screening so it goes to educate Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, whatever yeah. or the um, select committees. Yep. Is that what we call the action items? Yes. Is that, okay, that, so that's yes. the process. So the head office will come up with something, they'll feed it back to the, the, the conveners local will send out a lot yep. of good background information yep. and then we okay. find people that can help us with the And then you go out and with the, source the information yeah. and the opinions and mm. the knowledge and then you send that back and hopefully that gets put forward and, yeah. and, and actions are taken on that. That's okay. right because I, I represent the Heratonga Women's Centre on the National Council of Women and I really enjoy taking those action items, they have a, um, a shared lunch on a Friday and sure. I'll take one along for example, um, the one about um, death and dying recently and we had a great discussion and they're just people who have brought something for lunch and, sure. and we have this and for me it's real grassroots democracy yep. that they have their views about that particular issue, yep. Domestic Violence Act was being changed, that kind of thing and then they get collated with the rest and sent down to Wellington sure. and their views are heard. And that's quite empowering for Absolutely. the everyday person, yeah, isn't it? To feel yeah. that they can go to the Hiratanga Women's Centre and have a kai yeah. and have a bit of a discussion around that and then yes. they know that that's being taken forward at a national yes, level. Yes, exactly. So I, I really what a neat process. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And lobbying's the same sort of thing? Do you, yeah. do you lobby much? Uh, yes, mm. yes we do. Um, and I think again though, they're ones that are brought up by, um, by our national office yeah. and it might be that, um, that there's lobbying needed for something well domestic violence is a very good a good um, but but I think the other one that's come up recently of course is paid parental leave sure um, and again how many weeks off women would like yep. and it's more than what they're getting now so again we support that that um, 
discussion sure. and really support Sue Maroney and what she's doing. Fantastic. So, yes. Now, I did read an article by Ray Duff, and she is the uh, president of the National Council yes. of Women on, on the national level, uh, and it was uh, titled, Does New Zealand Need an International Women's Day? I thought it was a really good title, and, and it actually engaged me enough to read it. What's your views on that? Because the International Women's Day, we celebrate March 8th every yes, year, yes, don't we? Yes, yes. Right. Do we need it? Do we need to keep celebrating it? We sure do. Yes. We sure do. Definitely. I mean, I think... I mean, we do say there's issues to be dealt with here in New Zealand, and there's no doubting that. But when you look at the world, I mean, women's issues in some countries are really, really, really difficult for women. And it's really important that we support those women on an international level. Sure. For, um, and the United Nations, of course, has got the, um, the different, and they've actually got the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. That's a United Nations move. now. Um, New Zealand has to comply with that, they've signed up to it, they report back, but interestingly they report back what's going on in New Zealand, but in New Zealand also the organisations who are working with women also do a separate report. Ah. So we, um, National Council of Women, take part in creating a separate report yep. from the community point of view of how much New Zealand is actually adhering to that convention. Okay. And of course there's countries across the world where that is extremely difficult for women. Yep. So National Council of Women working very hard at a regional level, national yes. level and also have an international Interna voice. There's and I International think that's Council really of Women today. as well. Absolutely. Now I know we have some really neat things coming up next month and we're going to take a short break. When we come back we're going to find out all about the things that perhaps you might want to take part in. This is Chat Room. Good evening, welcome back. Loving talking to Kay Whelan and Jennifer Harris all about the National Council of Women and the fantastic work that they're doing both locally, nationally and internationally. Now, lots of things coming up, of course, and we've got a dinner coming up. Jennifer, tell us a little bit about that. Well, every year we run a dinner which um, gives the local people a chance to meet up with a woman who has made it in her field. Right. Not only women, because we had Dr. Russell Wills as the Children's Commissioner quite recently, but we've had speakers like the Chief Ombudsman and authors and sports people. And this year we have Kate Bradburn, who is the Chief Winemaker, a judge of wines local in New Zealand and has now received international status as a judge and is, uh, has been part of the EIT board, sure. uh, where the viticulture and their wine science degrees are part of their flagship degrees now. Yep. So she's making a huge impact in the wine industry in New Zealand. Um, and interestingly, she has not found obstacles uh, to being a woman in the field, yeah. which is refreshing. It's probably been predominantly quite a male sector. Apparently the, yes, yeah. the viticulture side, the wine science apparently not so much, but okay. anyway. So she will be speaking, um, we hold it at the Havelock North Community Centre and it's in May. So uh, we're looking forward to that and it gives people a chance to meet and hear people that they would never otherwise sure. get the chance Fantastic. to do. Fantastic. May 18th, is that May what we're looking at? May the 18th. May the 18th. Kate Radburn is the guest speaker and, and it's a dinner, is it? It's a dinner, yes. Fantastic, yes. all right. Yeah. How do people get tickets? Are they interested in coming to, along to that? How do we go about that? Well, our publicity has um, Kath Delator, who is 84590080 right, from okay. memory. Yeah. Um, but any member of National Council of Women will sure. point them in the direction of tickets, which Fantastic. are $40. Okay, mm. what kind of numbers do you normally get to, to the dinners? 140 to 160, wow. I think when we, uh, once we had 180, when we had Joy Cowley numbers. as the guest speaker. Goodness, so if mm. people want to get along, they need to get their tickets pretty fast. Yes. Eh? So that's yeah. May the 18th, Kate Radburn. You also um, have an annual breakfast in September? Yes, that's when we mark the anniversary of Suffrage Day, Universal Suffrage Day, which is the um, 15th of September. And we've moved into having panels, which has worked really well. Um, people gather for, for breakfast and to listen to. And the last couple have been um, women who have chosen to make New Zealand home and how oh, they found fantastic. the yeah. issues about integrating and language barriers and isolation and grief 
from what they've yeah. had to flee from and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And the year before we had women who were in unusual occupations for women, like the fire person um, and the um, electrical engineer and the woman who was chief mechanic at the garage and had huge trouble persuading people that she <laughs> did know what she was talking yeah. about when they I wanted bet. somebody to look at their car. I bet. So um, we've had some very interesting speakers Good and stuff. it's fun All to right. listen to them. Mm. Now I know that the National Council of Women, there's probably a lot of things that we haven't got time to cover mm. tonight mm. and there's a lot of different ways that people can get involved. Mm. So if there's people sitting at home thinking, you know, this sounds like something I might want to be a part of, mm -hmm. how do they go about joining the National Council of Women? Probably the simplest way, uh, people can join as individuals, that's, yep. that's relatively new uh, because it was organisations way back but now people can join as individuals. And what they can do, because if they don't, you know, they can do something really easily, is go to the National Council of Women website. So just Google National Council of Women, then they'll have the opportunity to go into the Hawke's Bay branch, mm -hmm. which will actually give them contact details for us. Yeah. And they'd be welcome to contact us if they're interested in joining, or even just interested in coming <laughs> along to a meeting to see what yeah. it's like, okay. just to get the feel of what we do. Yeah. And um, so that would be the way to do it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And if if people do join, or what can they expect? What happens? So say I join up today, mm -hmm. what happens? Do I have to attend meetings, or do am I suddenly typing minutes in a meeting? <laughs> How does it work? Well, we don't do that to you. We wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> but, uh, but we have a monthly meeting, so you'd be obviously welcome to come along to those. We would like you to come to those monthly meetings. Uh, some, and we always have a topic of some kind to think about. It may be an action item. It may be some a speaker, somebody local. Sure. Um, or it could be a discussion. Um, which we did last time discussing just what the organisations there were doing this year, what was coming up. And we also had a discussion on, um, it was quite good actually, on what women had experienced of discrimination in their, um, in their time working or, or any sexism ex they'd experienced. And that was a really sure. good discussion yeah. too. So, yeah. so that was just that particular night. So we have that kind of thing. And also we have the action items that are sent out to people so they can actually network with their woman friends or anyone else sure. who might be interested in, in making a contribution to an yep. action item. Okay. So this, Fantastic. Yeah, that's how it would work. So first of all, make contact and then make there's contact. lots of things that they can do, whether they want to become really involved or mm. just want to be part of something on a, on a more relaxed mm. level. Eh? Like coming just to the dinner or the breakfast. Yeah. Or yes. come along just to find out a bit more about something that they hadn't thought about. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Now, um, National Council of Women, there's 20 branches nationwide mm -hmm. uh, and you have more than 280 organisations and individuals uh, throughout New Zealand who, who kind of support and take mm -hmm. part in it. So, and from there, like you say, then you go out and you're talking to more. So you actually, you actually got quite a good movement mm -hmm. going on, eh? It is. And I think one of the things that National Council of Women have become very aware of is there's a whole new dimension through social media which sure. hasn't existed uh -huh. in the past decades. And so they're looking at, at, at how they're going to be able to support and respond to issues that come up on social media. So that's, and they're looking at their structure to make, because you can be a virtual member, you can actually join and just do it online. Yeah. So that's another thing which is, yeah. is going to is, is available now yeah. for people to join National Council of Women without necessarily going to their local branch. Yeah. So it's trying to make it more um, helpful and relevant sure. to younger women. And who, more accessible way yes, because at the end accessible. of the day it's, it's evolving. We're getting it's evolving. into a very online yes. social commentary world yes, exactly. and if we don't keep up with it we yes. tend to kind of just slowly yes. wither away, don't we? That's right and so National Council of Women intends keeping up with that Fantastic. because they have a great role to play. So Kay Whelan you are the President, Jennifer Harris you are the Vice President of the National Council of Women of Hawke's Bay Branch. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. It's been a pure joy and of course bringing Kate Shepherd with you to be <laughs> part of tonight. Um, I can't think of a more fitting person to sit in. Uh, this is Chat Room, of course, loving being at the Napier Library, fantastic place. Make sure you get along um, and enjoy all the services that they provide. I uh, hope you've had a good evening. Be good to yourselves. Be good to uh, each other. Good evening. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.